Welcome to our question and answer program. Please go ahead with your call. In Jonah chapter 3, 1 through 4, God said in verse 3, Nineveh was three days' journey. But in verse 4, God said that Jonah entered Nineveh a day's journey. So I was wondering, is God teaching that it took Jonah one day to enter Nineveh instead of three? Yes. Let me read the verses you're referring to. In okay. Jonah 3, beginning in verse 1, And the word of Jehovah came unto Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go unto Nineveh, that great city, and preach unto it the preaching that I bid thee. So Jonah arose and went unto Nineveh according to the word of Jehovah. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city of three days' journey. And Jonah began to enter into the city a day's journey, and he cried and said, Yet forty days in Nineveh shall be overthrown. Now, someone on eBible's Question and Answer Facebook group a few weeks back, they made a point that I think is correct. And that is, Nineveh, which is a picture of the world, is said to be three days' journey. But when God sends Jonah, and the name Jonah means dove, and a dove in the Bible and in each of the gospel accounts represents the Holy Spirit. So this is the second outpouring of the Holy Spirit that's in view. It would relate to the latter rain period. And God commands the Holy Spirit. He sends the Spirit into the world, of course, carried by the body of believers as the word of God was proclaimed to the nations of the world. But the point that's being made here is that Nineveh is a great city of three days' journey to reach all of Nineveh. It's so large a city, you must travel three days. But Jonah goes into the city a single day's journey and issues the proclamation that he was told to issue, yet 40 days. It's a timeline. It's a timeline with an end day. You could circle the calendar, yet 40 days in Nineveh will be destroyed. And then as far as the account goes, that's all that he did. Jonah did not go a second day, and he did not go a third day into the city. He only went one day's journey, and then apparently he went outside the city. He made himself a booth or a tabernacle and sat under it to see what would become of the city, and he waited for the rest of the time, 39 days. Obviously, he waited until the 40-day period would expire. And so we wonder, why does God tell us this? Is this just further evidence indicating that Jonah was rebellious about the whole thing or his heart wasn't in it, that he only did the least possible amount of work as he could in sharing the word of God just by going a day's journey. No, we have to remember that all of these historical events were controlled by God. And God wanted Jonah only to enter in a single day's journey and that's because it's really picturing or representing the command of Christ to go into all the world. Remember in Matthew 28, verse 19, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. That is the command that is known as the Great Commission. It's what the church has referred to for many centuries. And the command has traditionally been taught that the gospel was to go into every nation of the world and to reach all the people of the earth. And that's not correct. That is not what's in view with the Great Commission. The actual command of the Lord Jesus Christ, if it were to reach all the earthly nations and all the inhabitants of the earthly nations, we would have to say it was a miserable failure. It was just a complete failure because all the nations were not reached. Some were not reached until the 20th century. That means for 1,900 years they were not reached, and others still yet have not been reached. All the inhabitants of the earth throughout the last 2,000 years have not been reached. 
the command was baptize all nations. You're to teach all nations, baptizing them. Not a remnant from all nations, not a portion of all nations. You are to baptize and teach all nations. Baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, how many of the nations of the world were taught and baptized? A very, very small number. And again, a miserable failure if it's referring to the physical nations and all the earthly people that inhabit them. But it's not. It's not. In Revelation, and really this is an eye-opening verse, In Revelation 21, verse 23, And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations, and that's the same word, it's the word Gentile, the same word in Matthew 28, and the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. That's speaking of the new heaven and the new earth, the nations of them which are saved, compared to Luke chapter 12, verse 30. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after. So when we find the word nations, it could be nations of the world or nations of them which are saved. And obviously, there's no question about it. Obviously, in Matthew 28, when Jesus says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, he's referring to the nations of them which are saved, baptizing them, all the elect, all that will become saved, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. And then we have harmony. We see the gospel was not a miserable failure. It was an astounding success. All the nations of them which are saved were taught. All were baptized by the Spirit of God into the triune God. That is the Great Commission. Now, it does work out. It turns out that during the church age and during the little season of Great Tribulation, During the two periods of reign in which the nations of them which are saved were saved in the New Testament era, there's no way of knowing who they are or where they are. So the gospel had to go far and wide into the nations to large numbers of the people of the earth. They had to hear because we didn't know who were these nations of God's elect, the nations of them which were to be saved. It does work out that way. But that's a secondary concern. The original command is not to reach all physical nations and all physical people. And in Jonah chapter 3, God is making that point. The city, Nineveh, representing the world, is three days' journey. Jonah goes in one day's journey. And then there is that enormous response, that wonderful reaction of repentance from the king on down, because it's as though he has reached all of the elect, and you can break up the three days it would take to travel through the city in one-third, two-third relationship. One-third of the city was reached, two-thirds went unreached, because two-thirds, which written as a decimal is 0.666, the number of man, are not the elect of God. They are the nations of the world. But the nations of them which are saved, one-third that God brings through the fire. They were reached. And so we can relate this to the worldwide outpouring of the Holy Spirit in the days leading up to May 21, 2011, When the message of the Bible went far and wide and billions of people heard, but not necessarily every human being in every nation. That is not necessary nor required, but it was required that all the nations of them which are saved hear that message, and they did. 
And once they did, God can bring the evangelization of the earth to a close because the gospel has never been designed for those that are not predestinated to salvation. God has never sent the gospel into the world to reach unsaved men. It has never been the purpose. It was never part of the Great Commission. It has always been as Jesus came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel and for none other. It has always been designed to find and locate the lost sheep, God's elect. And once the last sheep is brought in, God can rightly, justly, properly close his salvation program and there is no fault, there is no wrong he has done because it was never intended to be sent forth in order to make man feel that God cared about him or to have some sort of safety net for the wicked of the world. No, the gospel had a very definite purpose to save the elect, and once that was accomplished, then... Okay, now God can stop sending forth the gospel. There's just no more to be baptized or taught. And remember, one of the prophets in the Old Testament, God does say they all shall have been taught of the Lord. And so the statement in that verse indicates that the Great Commission was fulfilled because all had been taught.